Anna Sorkin, aka Anna Delvey, is best known as a convicted con artist who stole some $200,000 from banks, luxury hotels, and individuals while pretending to be the heir to a $67 million trust fund. Her story was then captured in the Shonda Rhimes produced Netflix miniseries Inventing Anna. Sorokin talks to Forbes about life under house arrest, her lucrative art career, and the inspiration she takes from Sam Bankman Fried. How's it going? Uh, well, it's been really busy so far. Um, I'm really happy and grateful that I got the opportunity to be out and I'm not in, uh, not in jail anymore. Uh, but yeah, it's been pretty wild. <laughs> so what does a day in house arrest look like for you? Well, so far I've been pretty busy. So um, I'm like having people over all the time and like I've been, I've done a bunch of shoots. So usually like I'm up pretty early. I'm either doing like an interview or I'm recording my podcast or um, I'm working on my art. Yes, yeah, so I've been busy so far. I'm sure like I will be talking differently like in two months or three months from now, but so far. <laughs> what do you mean, talking uh, differently? Well, I'm sure it's like it's going to get old. Like now it's just like I'm excited, I'm out, and yeah. I have like the phone, I can get food delivery, but um, yeah, it's, pre it's very restrictive. Like I cannot go anywhere at all. Why did you uh, decide to stay in New York? Uh, well, I just love the city and I feel like my criminal appeal is still pending, so I should get a chance to um, finish that because like once you're in Europe, like nobody cares. Like all that just becomes completely irrelevant. Or if you were to be at a party and you were to introduce yourself, what would that introduction be like? How do you describe yourself? Gosh, oh, oh my gosh, I hate that question. I don't know. I feel like it would be like, just, I like I'm just assuming people are going to like Google me, so. <laughs> I saw some of your art, uh, you signed at Anna Delvey. Do you yeah. go by Anna Delvey? Or I think so. This is just like people kind of um, recognize me more, but there's no real difference. <laughs> I think like both names are being used equally from what I'm understanding. <laughs> and to you, there's no difference? No, no, I don't have like a split personality or anything. I don't like act different. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned your art. Tell us a bit about that. Uh, I started doing some sketches uh, during my trial and I kind of continued while I was in prison. And earlier this year, I created like a little uh, collection of 21 pieces and I had like a little show earlier this year and now I'm excited to have new tools and like I'm using canvases and I had like a little party doing Miami Basel. How much does a work of yours go for? Uh, I think it's between 15 and 25,000. It depends on the, wow. on the size of the piece. And is that your main source of income? Uh, yes, for now. Can you share how much you've sold of it? Well, I've sold uh, quite a lot of prints of my artworks that I've uh, made earlier this year. And um, I'm working on a bunch of other projects. I'm working on my book, my podcast, uh, my dinner series, my clothing line, but everything's in the works, so everything. <laughs> I've sold like um, a lot of prints. We sold like, I don't know, uh, over $300,000 worth of prints. Uh, which go for cheaper. I think they started $250 um, for like a print for a 9 by 12 and we sold a couple of originals. I would say um, around seven maybe. I don't know. I just like I'm not the one who's like dealing with it. I have. <laughs> you made a virtual appearance at Art Basel Miami Beach this year. I don't know if you know but one of the top moments of Art Basel Miami Beach um, involved this ATM by an art collective mischief mm -hmm. where if you put in your card it would announce your uh, the amount of money on your card. People were moving money from oh. account to account to uh, either appear higher or to have like oh. 420 as their <laughs> bank account balance. I, I, would, I would go the Sam Beckman fried route <laughs> down that? to my last hundred dollars. I'm trying to like make my story to be like, oh, I, I made a mistake, but I'm trying to turn this around uh, without trying to glamorize the mistake itself. Mm. It's like, you know, hopefully people will just take like the, the event of adversity and kind of like apply to whatever like bad thing happened to them and like work from there without going back and recommitting the bad thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's like there were a lot of times like before Netflix thing happened where like I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know like how long I will have to spend in prison. Um, yeah, like there's just so much uncertainty and you just never know what's going to happen to you. Like it may look glamorous from the outside, um, but yeah, there's just like so much work that goes in there and just like so much that I have to deal on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah. And so now 
Do you have a better sense of timeline for yourself? I know that you're fighting deportation. Uh, well, I'm a little bit further from deportation than I was before I got released because once you get released, you are um, you get transferred to a non-detained docket as opposed to when you're in jail, your case is expedited. But even then, uh, immigration is so um, like it's there's no transparency really, and uh, there's the backlog, especially from COVID, is so long. You never know. Like I might get a response next month or not in two years, and nobody really knows. And so you would be under house or you're under house arrest. I'm Georgia. trying to um, get some of the conditions lifted, okay. but there's no guarantee I have a will. So, um, yeah. And that's another thing. I just like never know what's going to happen. So maybe I'll be successful or maybe not. Yeah. Where do you see yourself in 10 or 20 years? Oh God, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm just trying to take it like day by day and just trying to um, kind of make the best out of what I working with right now but it's really hard to make any plans hopefully where i'm working on a project that um i like since you've been under house arrest you've kind of wasted no time in uh, re-entering the public eye through <laughs> many many interviews this is just one of them <laughs> uh why well i feel like I'll, i'm going to be written about regardless you know like people are still going to write that i got released there will still be photographers outside my house so like i may as well turn it into something positive and um, yeah just kind of channel the attention towards what I'm working on right now and try to move away from um, I mean until now the conversation has been it's like all oh, crimes this that so it's like it's been mostly negative so if I can use that and uh, yeah um, kind of like give attention to the projects I'm working on now and like also like with my dinner series, I'm trying to like involve some social good uh, component to it. Like I will be collaborating with some charities uh, that immigration and criminal justice reform focus. So um, yeah, well, hopefully people will give me a chance. <laughs> yeah, have you had any difficulties getting sources or funding like for something like this dinner series support? Um, no, not really. I mean, I'm not really looking for funding for that. So uh, I'm working with a production company who, and that will be filmed and with a charity. Like, I don't know, I have not, like, I have not been to that stage yet. Do you have any, like, hesitation about spreading yourself too thin with all of this? Uh, well, I'm lucky. Like, I'm just trying to work with best of the best people. So it's uh, a lot of it is just kind of... Um, yeah, just getting the best person. <laughs> I had to like find it out the hard way because you're like kind of trying to um, kind of cut corners and kind of like be cheap on some people. It just never works. It's like you're just going to end up um, like figuratively paying for <laughs> your choices <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tenfold later on. So yes, and it's always a process and I'm okay if it's like some of it will take longer. I'm just trying not to, like I'm getting all kinds of offers, I'm trying like not to jump on everything. And do you have any worries about the financial pressures of hiring the best of the best? Uh, well, obviously we are like discussing the financials beforehand, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely, I'm way more careful now with um, kind of like the objects because I feel like so many people just can't can't wait to like for me to just like oh Anna owes me fifty dollars like they just can't wait for me to like slip up and just like um, yeah just like quick accuse me <laughs> I mean it's understandable so I don't know <laughs> yeah I mean it's I mean it's good <laughs> you wrote an essay and you said that you hoped that by the time inventing Anna came out you would have moved on with your life and that it would be a conclusion to a long chapter do you feel like that happened. Um, I mean, <laughs> clearly not. <laughs> it's, just, it's, I'm a little bit further than I was earlier this year. So hopefully now the Netflix series is out and like, I mean, they're still kind of writing about it, but hopefully the next year something else will come along. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Yeah. I mean, it's a process. I don't expect it to be overnight. I'm going to ask you a question that you get asked a lot, but I'll, oh, I'll ask it in two parts. The first part is how have you changed over the past few years? And the second part is, are you sick of being asked that question? <laughs> no, the question I'm be, um, the most of being sick um, of asked of is like if I watched the Netflix series. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> have you? No, <laughs> still did not. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, that can change, I guess, any day, but um, yeah, still not, huh? Uh, well, 
just I've been through the whole like criminal justice and immigration immigration system, and I just met so many people, um, and I totally kind of switched my priorities because um, all I used to care about like kind of earlier was very kind of like shallow and superficial, and I thought like I was so well traveled and like um, I knew all kinds of people, but I did not. It was like still the same like type of person like somebody who travels a lot like who cares about art and I was not really exposed to um the people who like get to go to jail <laughs> so it was like a really eye-opening experience and um yeah I did learn a lot it's like you cannot just go for something like that and um uh, stay the same yeah and like I have a lot more interest in like and kind of the whole like politics and society because I've been affected by uh, it myself like when Biden got elected they lifted my ice warrant um and that's the only reason I got released last year and because he tried to like put moratoriums on all deportations and um six weeks later there were um more in the clear with the rules and this is why I got rearrested not because anything I've done like myself mm. it's like literally just the rules and uh the switch of the administration <laughs> What do you feel like more people should know about you? Um, well, <laughs> well, hopefully they will realize that my intentions were never like to commit fraud or to commit any crimes. And like I've generally made some mistakes. And um, yeah, hopefully it will give me a chance to move on <laughs> and not just like try to. I think like it happens more to women than it does to men. Like women are like being witchified a lot. Like, you know, <laughs> when... <laughs> It's like it's normal for men to like make mistakes and fail, but um, women are like witches and cons and like so deceiving and like <laughs> they just like out to like get something from you, which I think is not fair. What does it feel like being famous for being a con artist? I don't see myself as a con artist, so um, but I do realize that um, the f I mean. I I wouldn't even say that I ever wanted to be famous. I was just working on my project and I was trying to make something happen. And um, I guess it just like attracted all this media attention. Um, well, I feel kind of responsibility not to glamorize crime and just kind of like to show people, like hopefully I'm not going to inspire anybody to commit crimes <laughs> in order to become famous. So um, yeah, hopefully people, like it's just very, um, kind of hard to show somebody because I guess when people like Google me they see like me going to trial and I'm out of jail like from a photo shoot to photo shoot but nobody really gets to see like the jail part of it because like there are no cameras in jail and I spent a lot of time in there so and like it wasn't all great and gra glamorous <clears throat> so do you want to tell me a bit about that uh well yeah it's just like there are no photographers and Rikers and it's still like uh it's not great like I made it work but um and it's still like it's a tough place and <laughs> yeah nobody it's like you should not hopefully like nobody will decide like let me go to jail and become famous so